our way to Parfield Cove. Parfield Cove? No hotel, sir, you know. There's a house called the White Cottage, isn't there? White Cottage? I didn't know anyone was living there. Can I get a taxi? Taxi? Not this time of night. You can walk. Take your 20 minutes. Do it to the left when you leave the station. Go through the gateway and take the path over the top of the cliff. No, thanks very much. Good night. and I takes it slow. You in a hurry? Yes, I'm looking for the white cottage. Yeah. Well, this is the path, isn't it? Yes, this is the path right enough. I works down there beyond them rocks, lobsters. Just going down to lift me pots. You better let me show you the way down. All right, thanks. <laughs> no walk for a stranger, this. Nah, not at night time. You are a stranger, aren't you? Yes, I'm a stranger. You sure there's someone at the cottage? Yes. Well, not always, you know. I see a woman round about there sometimes, mostly weekends. Still, if you're expected, that's all right. There you are. Used to be a smuggler's place. It's all right if you don't want to be disturbed. Well, there is a light on. There's a welcome waiting for you. I thought you was an Ari. Thanks. Good night. Good night, sir. Well, good morning. Mr. Durham not in yet? I know, sir. We haven't seen him this morning, sir. Mm. 
Oh, by the way, where's the local newspaper office? The examiner, sir? Yes. Just around the corner, second on the left. Well, who runs it now? Oh, still old man Boscombe, you know, sir. Thank you. By the way, this is uh, my father's appointment pad. You didn't have an appointment with him, did you? No. Well, now that we've cleared that out, where do we go? I suppose I got a nerve coming to you at all. It's quite all right, I wasn't doing anything. I came on the spur of the moment. I thought perhaps looking for a job. Well, I've just got back to England. I haven't fixed anything. I've always wanted to be a journalist. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Cigarette. Oh, thank you. Any experience? I've tried my hand at freelance work. Well, I've tried my hand at boiling an egg, but I've never applied for a job as a chef. I'm sorry. I'm afraid you've come to the wrong office. That long-legged man draping himself over the counter in the outside office is our star reporter. You saw how busy he was. Doesn't matter. Sorry I troubled you. No, no, I'd like to help you. Listen. There's a chap who's beginning to put Seagate on the map, opening up a chain of smart restaurants, rebuilding the amusement park. You're talking of Charlie Durham. You don't know him, do you? I knew him before the war. Why didn't you go to him right away? He's not the kind of man I'd be inclined to go to right away. Well, some like him and some don't. I'm one of those who don't. He gets a lot of loyalty from the people who work for him. Do you know his man Painter? No. A little drunk he fished out of the river some years ago. Follows him like a dog. I may have seen him. Mm, chalk it up in Darren's favor. He saved a man's life. He's a good family man, too. Is he? <laughs> Got two boys. Always showing their photograph around that fancy pub of his. The Primrose Bar. Do you know it? I'm going to have lunch there. Oh. Nice of you to patronize a place owned by someone you dislike so much. I'm sorry about the journalism. That's all right. I probably shouldn't have been much good at reporting local flower shows anyway. Well, we do get other things. Such as? Occasionally someone dies. This morning, for instance, two deaths on the cliffs. Two deaths? Well, how many do you expect? Were they well-known inhabitants? Not particularly. No, Tories in a small way. One of them was a fellow by the name of Carsten. He fell over a cliff. Nothing surprising in that. No? He was generally tight. He should have stayed on level ground. Who was the other? A woman found dead in a lonely cottage. Natural death? Wish I knew. Do they have a name? A Miss Watson. Can't find anything out about her. She only used this place, the White Cottage, for weekends. And nobody knows anything about her? Not so far. Did, um, did she own the White Cottage? No. Maybe there's a makings of a journalist in you after all. You ask plenty of questions. Well, thank you for giving me so much of your time. Not at all. Did you get what you wanted? Yes, I got what I wanted. Now, you don't hold it that way. Look, let me show you. Hold it that way. And then stand ready. That's the idea. No, no, the other way around. Left hand on oh, top. I see. That's it. Got it? She's ready, George. Look up, Kate. Here it comes. This way, Kate. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't looking what I was doing. Did I hurt you? Well, I... <laughs> Better sit down for a moment, hadn't you? Do you always get to know people like this? Cigarette? Thank you. You're lost. No, I've got another one here somewhere. Oh, yes. The beach is pretty crowded today. You shouldn't come to Seagate if you want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. Have you just come down? No, I came last night. I only came down today. Day by the sea. What is it? Well, I've seen you before somewhere. I've never been here before. No, I mean this morning. I saw you getting off the coach. Yeah, I remember thinking... Tell me, was something wrong? Wrong? Yes, I thought you looked a bit upset. Oh, yes, I was upset. Anything I can do to help? 
Oh, no. No, thank you very much. I thought perhaps you expected someone and he hadn't turned up. I didn't expect anyone. I'm by myself. That's how I wanted it today. How's the, uh, the leg? Oh, that's fine. Don't go, please. I'd like to help you. We're strangers. Well, yes, of course. And I'd better introduce myself. Jim Medway. Anne Cordy. Well, go on. That's all. Married or single? No, I'm not married. You? I was married. My wife's dead. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I have to make a telephone call. I shan't be long. I'll bring back some cigarettes. Morning, Mr. Dunham. Oh, I know. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Come on, Queenie, come on. Give it to me, give it to me. Uh. Queenie, you're gorgeous. Falling in love again. I know so well life's an end. What's the matter? What's the matter, Charlie? That's Queenie. You look awful, Charlie. You know, you could stand a little shave yourself. Mmm, pretty. That's the real old stuff, huh? Of course, I didn't have a drink myself in three months. Aren't you proud of me? All right, I had one, but I didn't even get into a fight. And... Here, he wrote you again. Tell you. There won't be any more of those. Yes. Yes. This is Charlie Dunham. Who? Trouble? If you can call blackmail trouble. I do. Somebody saw me with Lorna last night. He told me what time I left the cottage. How in the blazes could they know that? Well, that's simple, he. No, oh, he's got nothing to do with it. Look, Charlie, don't mind it, but why don't you finish with that woman, huh? I finished with her last night. You did? Did you make any fuss? She threatened to. <laughs> Stupid creeps, that always the same. Always that. I wish, I wish I'd know what they want from. But she wasn't. A... No. I've got more than that on my plate. Look, Charlie, you, you know I'm no cheap stooge, but... Well, look at your name out there in those beautiful eight-foot letters. Well, what does it mean? It means you, you're more than a king in this town. Everybody loves you. If not, they respect you, but everybody knows you. I bet you there aren't any ten people that, that don't know what the name Charlie Durham spells. Not any ten in the whole town. Or 90 miles either way. That's what I mean, Charlie. You're right. Oh, Queenie, please. Oh, please, forgive me. I, I didn't mean to be rude, but, <laughs> you know, Charlie comes first. And... What's the matter? You may hear the night. Oh, no. Yeah, just like the rest of those creeps. You should pack it tighter than that. Will you show me how, please? That's a very good one. It's perfect. Excuse me, but I've got to go now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Did you make a call? Yes. Yes, I made it. 
And I remembered the cigarettes. No, thanks. Now, you were going to tell me what was worrying you when you got off the bus. Was I? Mm-hmm. Well, there's nothing to be mysterious about. I just discovered I'd lost my handbag. Oh, well, it's a simple problem after all. I suppose all your money was in your handbag. There's nowhere else I could keep any. I'll lend you some money. You can't go around all day without any. All right. Well, thank heaven for a woman of a sense. Well, it was obvious, wasn't it, that as soon as I told you you'd want to lend me some, and I decided I wouldn't mind borrowing from you. You can give me your address and I'll send it back. Of course. How much did you lose? All I need is a pound. Yeah, you better take five. Oh, no. No, what? I'll borrow three. Sure that's enough? Yes, really. You see, I didn't come down here to spend amusements and all that. I came, oh, just to sit by the sea and think. About anything in particular? Yes, about something in particular. <laughs> Sorry. Afraid I'm being inquisitive. Shall we move along a bit? Yes. I think we've got nothing better to do than listen to them. Get me the police station, please. Hello, police station. Uh, Henry Bosco speaking. See, get examiner. Inspector Tenby there. What? She's gone to Parfield. Oh, no message. Thanks. Goodbye. Post just coming in, sir. Oh, good. He was hurrying down this path as if the devil was after him. And when we got to the cottage, he just stood and looked at it. There was a light in the window. I'm expected, he says, looking at the light, I'm expected. Four o'clock in the morning, it was. Can you be sure of that? I heard the clock striking in the cottage just after I left him. One, two, three, four. Look at it. Mm. Miller, get me the time on Cranston's watch. What's the time on the watch? You didn't actually see this man go into the cottage. Well, he wouldn't come down that time of night just to look at it, would he? Yes? Carson's watch had stopped at six minutes past four, sir. Oh, thanks. So you heard this scream a few minutes after leaving the man? Ah, uh, the most horrible scream ever screamed anywhere. Four o'clock in the morning's a terrible time to hear a scream like that. Of course, of course. I'm going down to the cottage. Miller, you better stay here. I'll send somebody to relieve you. Goodbye, Mr. Church. Now, I'll tell you, I found him. As soon as I hears this scream, I runs like the wind, and there he was, lying there with his head crushed like an eggshell. Uh, all right. Thank you very much, Mr. Church. Very much indeed. Like an eggshell? Yes, you'll be wanted at the inquest. I'll let you know when later. Uh... Oh. Over to me. Careful now. That's right. Now, you do the head. Now then, Hillary, be a good chap and see me at the station. I say, have you, have you any more news about either of these two deaths? No. Well, there's just one crumb of information you would give me. The woman who lived here, this Miss Watson, did she die in her sleep or was she bumped off? I mean, you could tell me that without getting yourself reduced to the ranks, couldn't you? I could do, but I don't think I'm going to at the moment. Yes, on the seafront, they call you Trap Mouth Tempe. Oh, go away. Well, I came all the way out to this place to give you some information, and now you're too busy to listen, aren't you? All right, better come in. All right, Hillary. We're not on a sightseeing tour. You've seen the cigarette butts? No. Tell me about them. Well, some with lipstick and some without. Well, that means there was a man here with it, doesn't it? If your father ever throws you off the examiner, I can get you a job in the force. You could make the tea for the office staff. You think you can solve things without any help? That's your trouble. Now, listen, Hillary. I put up with you because I like your father. Now, what have you got to tell me? The chap's just been to see me at the office. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Congratulate you? He had no appointment. He just came in on the impasse, he said. He pretended he was looking for a job. What makes you think he was pretending? Oh, just a hunch. He didn't know a thing about newspaper work. Why do you think he came to see you, then? Simply to find out what he could about these two deaths. He just found this identity card, sir.
Did you give him the information he wanted? Well, there wasn't much to give. Was he interested in both deaths? No, he was surprised when I told him there were two. Which in particular did he want information about? The woman's. Get his name. Yes, Medway. Jim Medway. Mm -hmm. Was he only looking for information or did he give you any? He seemed to have some grudge against Charlie Durham. He wanted me to establish the fact that Durham owned his cottage. He knew that much, did he? Well, he suspected it. Did he know Durham then? I hadn't seen him for years. He's lunching at the Primrose Bar. Told you everything, didn't he? Could you identify him? Of course I could. I've just seen him. Well, we may want you to. Oh, and thanks for coming to see me. Well, thank you. Maybe you'll tell me something one day. Maybe. In fact, I can tell you something now. This woman, Miss Watson, we've got her identity card. Her name is no more Watson than mine is. Well, who was she? A Mrs. Lorna Medway. What? Will you have lunch with me? It's much too early to have lunch yet. You'll be doing me a great favor. Yes, going but I'll meet you here in half an hour. Couldn't we eat somewhere a little quieter than this? All right. I want to buy something to put these into, and then I'll come back and find you inside. I don't know exactly where I'll be, but I'll be there somewhere. You won't fail me, will you? I won't fail you. People. I'd never have recognized you. No? Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Jeff. Excuse Thanks me. For the drink. Oh, that's sunburn. You look good. You look terrific. Do I, Charlie? What are you going to have? I'm going to have beer. A beer? All right, one out of the sink. You're down for the day? I might stay longer. It all depends. Your hand's shaking a bit, Charlie. Yes, I work too hard. You don't look as if you've got much sleep. To tell you the truth, Jim, I don't. Too much on your conscience? Oh, I have a lot of responsibilities. So they tell me. Restaurants, amusement parks, small properties about the place. I have other responsibilities, too. A couple of boys since you last met me. Perhaps you'd like to see their photograph. Are they very proud of you, Charlie? Well, I'm very proud of them. Yes, I can understand how you feel. About your boys, I mean. I've got a little daughter. I didn't see her till the other day. She's a sweet kid, but uh, we're strangers. I suppose Lorna and I would have been strangers, too. The large whiskey, please. I'll give him one out of there. How are the kids, Charlie? Oh, fine, then, thanks. <laughs> see you later. You're a popular man, Charlie. Uh, your whiskey, sir. It's nice and lovely over here. Yes, people can always be pushed around to suit you, can't they, Charlie? Everyone except me. What? I said except me. I don't understand what you're getting at. I think you do, Charlie. You see, I know. You know? You, you know what? I know you've been having an affair with my wife while I've been away. It's a lie. I assure you, Jim, it's a lie. It's just a lot of gossip. No one can prove anything against me. I can, Charlie. Well, who told you all this? I have a right to know who's accusing me? I am. Ah, I'm not going to sit here listening to all that rubbish. Hey, Charlie. I'm waiting for a girl. We're having lunch here. Are you trying to blackmail me? No, Charlie. I just want you to admit it. You see, I know about the White Cottage. I know Lorna came there as Miss Watson. I know you visited her last night. And I know you left at four o'clock this morning. I was there, Charlie, waiting outside. 
When you left, I could have touched you. But I wouldn't have liked that. Suppose I do admit it. Suppose I do admit that Laura and I were friendly. Oh, very friendly. Yes, and nothing more than that. She promised me you never to... You not take any notice of promises, Charlie. She made a promise to me, too, you know, a long time ago. Listen, Jim, there's no reason for you and I to quarrel over Lorna. She's not worth it. Don't talk like that, Charlie. Not about the dead. I'm so sorry. The dead? Who's dead? Lorna is. You trying to put the wind up me? Charlie, Charlie. Somebody will hear you. Is this a joke? Well, I'd hardly call it a joke. When did she die? Last night. How do you know all this? Because I killed her. I don't believe it. Take your time. Is this some sort of game? I'd hardly call it a game, Charlie. If it's true, then why... Why am I telling you? I'm telling you because when I talk to the police, I'm going to say that you murdered her. You won't get away with that. Of course I won't. They'll find out who's the culprit in the end. But think what it'll do to you, Charlie. Think of all the fuss and the publicity. The beautiful publicity. Think how your family will love it. Think how your boys will enjoy reading about it in the morning papers. Oh, yes, it'll all come out. You see, I can tell them about your relationship with my wife. I can tell them you were with her until 4 o'clock this morning. There was a fisherman with me showing me the way. I can tell them she was dead when I found her. And I can show them this letter. Recognize it, Charlie? It's a letter from you to Lorna. I found it at the White Cottage. There's nothing in that. Wait a minute, I'll tell you what it says. It says that if she attempts to tell your wife, you won't be answerable for the consequences. Yeah, she always expressed herself charmingly. Silly of you to write like that, though. But of course, you went to know she was going to be killed. You know, Charlie, I think the police will have quite a case against you. Have you been to the police? No, I thought I'd wait till they came to me. I've made quite sure they know I'm in Seagate. Besides, it's a lovely day. Why waste it in police stations? I'm having lunch with a girl. Anne. Anne, I want you to meet the important Mr. Charlie Durham. Miss Anne Corday. How do you do? How do you do? I can't have lunch with you. Oh. I thought I'd just have it alone on the beach. I'm sorry. That's all right, I understand. I've got to work out something. I can't help. I don't think anyone can. Thank you for lending me the money. If you'll give me your address, I'll send it to you. Of course. Send it to me, care of the Primrose Bar. All right. Forgive me. I forgive you. Goodbye, Mr. Durham. Yes, pity I didn't meet her before I met Lorna. Well, Charlie, it looks like I shall be lunching alone after all. You'll let me have your best table, won't you? A pleasure. Mario! Bless you. A special table for my friend. Mary! We haven't come down here for you to look at people. Look at the sea! Why you Sorry, sir. I'm back early, Thornton. Sorry to disturb your lunch. Just finished, sir. Anything come up about Carsten? Uh, Dr. Allen telephoned to say there was no marks on the body that couldn't be caused by the fall. That's all, sir. Well, if you go over a cliff that height, you do get a few marks on the body. <laughs> you do, sir. There's no reason to think that this wasn't an accident. Just wish he'd chosen some other time, that's all. Two deaths in one night. <laughs> we haven't had a doubtful one in a year. Oh, I suppose he was drunk. What did Alan say? No, sir. There was no alcohol in the stomach. Mm hmm He must have gone over because he felt dizzy without it. Oh, well, he's no loss to the town. Anything from the White Cottage? Analyst report on the cigarette end, sir. They were smoked last night. Well, that doesn't tell us much, does it? What about that clock in the hall? Could you hear it strike from where the fisherman said he did? You could hear it if the door was open. Well, someone must have opened the door at four o'clock. To go in, I suppose, sir. Or to come out. I suppose they didn't find the other part of this note that we picked up under the desk? No word, sir. All day I've been thinking what to do about us. Perhaps if I go, it will only make you glad. I don't know. But I do know it will simplify things. For you, 
and for me too. We've had a good time, and I would remember some of it with so much pleasure if... There must be another page somewhere. Unless someone interrupted her and she was never able to finish it. She was going to leave someone. Wonder who it was. Any news of the husband, sir? Yes, I think so. If my information is good, he'll be lunching at the Primrose Bar. I'd like you to go down there. Do you want me to bring him in? No, just keep an eye on him so that we can get him when we want him. Very good, sir. That's him. All right, Marion. Disgusting. Now, how, how a man can sit down there and eat and... And only last night he killed his wife. No, that is not nice. Well, she doesn't think he has anything to worry about. He has nothing to worry about. But can't we give him something to worry about? Listen, there's more evidence against me than there is against him. He's no fool. He's got all this worked out. He wants to smash my life. But Charlie, please, smash your life? I, I won't let him. There's nothing you can do about it. Why? I can do a lot of things. I, I can see that, that I was here with you last night and, and we had a lot of business to talk over, didn't we? To get married, to swear to it, uh, it doesn't cost much, does it? No good. No? Well, couldn't we offer him some money? That's not what he wants. But what does he want? I'm sorry. He wants to ruin me. It's as simple as that. Yes. What a creep. Why, well, I, I still bet you, Charlie, there isn't a jury in the country that, that will put you away on what he's got on you. The damage would be done. Everything will come out, everything. And what do you think's going to happen to my boys? Oh, but please, Charlie, nothing is going to happen to David and nothing is going to happen to little Johnny. We'll see to that. Tell me, uh, how long do you think it'll be till he goes to the police? I don't know. All day, maybe. Well? Unless they question him before. I have an idea. What about if we go to the police first? Are you crazy? Why? Do you think I want the police in here? No. No, that's no good. Well, then there's only one thing left. We still have all day. But... Accident has to happen. What are you talking about? I'm talking about an accident. A lot of things can happen to him before he goes to the police. A lot of things. Want it? Yes. Yes? Yes? Who? All right, show him up. Young Boscombe from the Examiner. Hmm? Want me to talk to him? Oh, do you want me to leave or what? If you want to. But no accidents. Accidents? <laughs> no, no, Charlie, you, you don't understand anything about accidents. You see, a, a man can be very careful, very careful, and still a lot of things can happen to him. You don't know about that. Remember, Dipsy, if you get into any trouble... I don't get into trouble. I can't help you. I don't want you to help me. See, this time... I'm going to help you. See? Come on, Charlie, stop falling apart, will you? Come in. Hello, Painter. Good afternoon, sir. Hello, Charlie. Well, what can I do for the press? You can tell it what you know about Jim Medway. Medway? Why should I know him at all? Oh, he knows all about you. Oh, what does he know about me? Something to make him dislike you quite a lot. A successful man always has a lot of enemies, among the unsuccessful. I knew Jim Medway years ago. And you haven't seen him lately, though? No. Well, he's uh, eating in your restaurant downstairs. A lot of people eat in my restaurant downstairs, but I don't get a list of their names. He said he was coming here to see you. You spoke to him? Yes, he was in the office this morning. He said anything about me? Well, he seemed to think you owned the White Cottage. I do, but it's in Painter's name. Oh, I see. Then perhaps you haven't heard uh, a woman died there last night. I know. A Miss Watson. No, as a matter of fact, a Mrs. Lorna Medway. 
Oh, you mean uh, Medway's wife? That's right. Did you know her? Yes. She was a typist in my office before she married Medway. Not for publication. Oh, very well, I respect it. That's clever, isn't it? I don't want to get mixed up in any of that sort of thing. I wish I could give you a story, but I'm sorry, I can't. But have a drink. Thanks. Cigarette. Oh, I, I only smoke a pipe. Medway didn't send you here, did he? No, no, I was just following my nose. Well, follow your nose into that. <laughs> Well, thanks. Oh, and if the police tried to see you, I wouldn't offer them American cigarettes if I were you. You see, somebody was smoking them at the cottage last night, and the police are apt to jump to conclusions. Have you had a great sorrow recently? I suppose so. I suppose everyone has. This is your heart, Lion. You're excessively warm-hearted. This has brought you unhappiness, but it will bring you happiness too. Someone will enter your life, but because you've been hurt before, you will try to run away. Oh, sorry to keep you, dearie. Oh, that's all right. I, I, Won't I, I, take long. Well, I... Now, come along. You will have two children. The first will be a girl. You will be asked to make a great sacrifice for her. There's, um, there's violence in your hand. Your heart will make you possessive because you love deeply and you give love up reluctantly. You must learn not to be possessive. You must learn to give things up when... I don't want to hear any more. Please. You are impetuous. Miss, come back, Miss. Sorry, excuse me. Impetuous. Sometimes I'm nearer the mouth than I think. Oh, sorry. People on the shins first. Why did you run away from the fortune teller? Oh, it was nothing. Stupid of me to go in at all. Was it something she said? Most of the time she was talking nonsense, but then I didn't want to talk about it. All right. How did you know I was there? I was next door. I didn't think I'd see you again. Well, I thought maybe sometime. I'm going for a swim. Is it all right if I come with you? Yes, it's all right. We'll have to get some costumes, though. Here you are. <laughs>
just everything except the car. And the speedboat. That chap can certainly handle it. I'd say that speedboat got in a bit too close. He oughtn't to be allowed to practice there. Funny he couldn't see you in the water. Hadn't I seen you before somewhere? Maybe. Was it on the pier? I was there. You down for the day? No, miss, I live here. It's usually the visitors who take the boats out, isn't it? Oh, I like to get in the boat occasionally. I'm glad you do. Inspector Tenby? Well, what can I do for you, Inspector? Yes, the Seagull's one of my boats. I didn't know he had it out. Absolutely insane. Yes, of course, very dangerous. Yes, I'll tell him right away. Oh, yes, I'll make it perfectly clear to him. If anyone can handle him, you know I can. Yes, yes, Inspector. I'm extremely sorry. Oh, it's pretty out there today. A little breezy, but, but very beautiful. Do you know who that was? How should I know? A he or a she? Tenby. Tenby. Charlie, you should have more important things to do than talk to the police. Are you completely insane? What? How many times have I told you, you stupid clot, this is the one time that I don't want the police cluttering up the place? Are you touched? What's the matter with you? Matter with me? Nothing is the matter with me. What's the matter with you? It's a problem. You've always been able to deal with the police. But not about murder. But it won't be murder. It'll be an accident. And I told you I don't want any more accidents. Who is that? Yes. The same gentleman, Who? Mr. Durham. Mr. Jim Medway. All right. Medway? On his way up. Oh, but that's beautiful. Charlie, don't you want to go to a bar for a little while? I'd so much like to be alone with him. Just for a few minutes. I, d I promise you, it won't be long. Oh, please, won't you even do me a little favor? I know you don't need me, but it hurts me. A, a man like you, you shouldn't even talk to him. All right, if you want to be mean. Weak eyes, Mr. Painter? No good ones. I have perfect eyes. 
See, this one sees everything I'm supposed to see. And this one doesn't see at all what I don't want to see. Mmm, Zeiss, good. I suppose you can see quite a lot out of the window with these, Charlie. I have more to do than to look through the windows all day long. Mm. Even when your Mr. Painter is trying to murder me. Look, sir, in this part of the world, we don't go around murdering people. Sometimes I wish I could. Yes, I suppose it would be very convenient for you if something happened to me before the police catch up with me, wouldn't it? Listen, have you got anything to say? Get it off your chest and get out. All right, Charlie. You've left it too late, Charlie. What do you mean? The police have caught up with me. No, don't give me that. If you'd been to the police, you wouldn't be here. Go and look. It's Saunton. And he's a policeman, isn't he? Well, what else could he be? So now you see why you left it too late. If anything happens to me, he'll know who caused it. I expect they've already got a report about the speedboat incident. No, oh, you're in it up to the neck. They've got you taped now, Charlie, because they know you tried to get rid of me. And why? Because I know you killed Lorna. Paris tonight, girls? Well, we were thinking of going. OK, get your dads on and we'll have a bit of the old promenade first. Shall we sit down? What time does your bus go? There are plenty of buses. I have nothing to hurry back for. Good. Well, I can let you have two of these pounds back. I haven't needed them. I've been with you all day. You are independent, aren't you? Please take them. All right. Don't blame me if they chuck you off the bus because you can't pay your fare. I have a lie for that. Is that a photograph of your wife? Yes. May I see it? Yes, of course. You loved her once. What a strange thing for you to say. Oh, is it? I didn't mean anything. Yes, I loved her. It was a long time ago. I must have loved her. You see, we were only together a short time, and then I was away for three years. I kept this picture with me, but as the months went by, it sort of got like something I'd cut out of a magazine, you know? I stayed faithful to her because I thought when I got back, everything would be all right. I should fall in love again. But when I did get back, I... She... she died. I didn't know her very well. I suppose if you've been away from someone for a long time, you'll become strangers. Oh, Jim, I'm so afraid. Afraid? Afraid it will happen in my life. What is your life, Anne? Oh, I've been so good about not telling you my troubles. Tell me now. It's quite simple. I've got a little girl. She's two years old. And the father? He went away. Did he promise to marry you? I just took it for granted we'd get married. Are you in love with him? Yes. Poor Anne. My father's a lawyer. We're very respectable. That made it worse. But you said you, you had nothing to hurry back for. Where's your baby? With my cousin, Marion. Did you give her up? It's a decision I have to make. That's why I'm here, to be away from them, to think about it by myself. And what do they want you to do? Marion and her husband want to adopt her. 
They're going to live in New Zealand. If I let her go, I shall never see Jill again. And what do your parents think? They say I must think of Jill's future, as if I ever did anything else. I can see their point of view. So can I. I can see mine, too. It would break your heart to give her up, wouldn't it? She's my baby. I love her. What are you thinking? I just realized why you ran away from the fortune teller. Why? Because she was giving you advice you didn't want to hear. Yes. Yes, I suppose so. Good evening. Wonderful weather. Wonderful. You down for the day? Yes. Having a nice time? Yes, thank you. I like to think of young people enjoying themselves. Have a good time while you're young, what? <laughs> oh. How sad to read of people dying on a day like this. You know, I was on the cliff at that very spot only the other day. And that white cottage. No place for a woman alone. Jim, he's right. We should be having a good time. Let's enjoy ourselves before everything closes down on us. Restless. Charlie, don't have to call them in, do you? Not yet. Nothing like a couple of deaths to attract the customers away. They're all up on the cliffs. We've lost him. We're by ourselves at last. Is this what you call being by ourselves? Well, anyway, we've lost that man who's been following us all day. Has he been worrying you? Well, he was following us, wasn't he? Well, he isn't now. Come on, let's make the most of our freedom. <laughs> Most valuable gift on the store, that was. That's right, Thomas. 
Yes, you disturbed him. Uh, how's that? Sure. Now, look, I'll show you. Go easy on the trigger, see? Just a nice general squeeze. Practicing what you preach, aren't you? Hey, hey, hey. Look, you Here. 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 That necktie that was found on Carson's body, have we got it here? Yes, sir. Fetch it, will you? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Well, get me the white cottage, will you? Well, Sergeant Larkin, have you made a search of the garden? Yes, sir. We've looked everywhere. No trace of the second page of that note we found. No, I didn't expect you to find it. This is the tie Carson was wearing, sir. Hmm. Practically brand new, isn't it? It's badly creased, sir. I can see that. Selby, you were there. What does he mean by, I had great difficulty in removing the necktie? It was very tightly knotted, sir. You mean it was choking him? No, sir. It was quite loose about the neck. It was just in a very tight knot, sir. Strange way to treat a new tie. Yes, sir. What were the rest of his clothes like? Were they new too? As far as I could judge, sir. Carson seems to have come into money before he died. They should tell me something. All right, sir, we'll leave it here. Sergeant Thornton. <laughs> so you let yourself be fooled by that old trick, did you? Well, where did they go before you lost them? Fairground. Anything happen? Shooting gallery? Who fired the shot? Painter, eh? Oh, that's interesting. Well, where do you suggest looking for Medway now? All right, I'll meet you there. Yes, yes, the Primrose Bar. I have an idea that that's where all the threads tie up. I still want to sail it, you know. Sail it? In the bar? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Well, this is the right way to finish a day by the sea. At a period, Mm. The day isn't over yet. You sound afraid again. I am afraid. About us? Yes. Well, we'll meet next week, won't we? No, Jim. Oh, why do we go on pretending? Pretending? Pretending there's a future. You know there isn't for us. You know we won't meet again next week. You know we'll never meet again. No, I don't know. Let's be honest before we part. Let's. Jim, I know. I know about you. What do you know about me? I know you killed your wife. Who told you that? I overheard. In that place, the Primrose Bar this morning. It's the truth, isn't it? I'm sorry, Jim. 
Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You're amazing. Amazing? Mm. You stayed with me all day. I liked you. You were a man who'd been kind to me. And after you ever heard what I said to Durham, you ran away. When I heard you say that, I couldn't. I had to go away. I couldn't just sit down and have lunch with you. No. When we met again, I wanted to stay with you no matter what you'd done. I knew, at least I thought I knew what you must be feeling and thinking today. I knew how terrible it would be if you were left alone without friends. I wanted to help. If it had to be your last day of freedom, I wanted to make it a day you could remember without too much bitterness. Like the last day of the holidays? Yes. You're a wonderful girl, Anne. They don't turn out your sort in bundles of dozens. Don't cry, Anne. I didn't know. If you hadn't met me today, you'd have nothing to cry about, would you? We could have been happy. No. Not with that sign boring into my mind. You're very bitter about him. I have reason to be. You're going to say he killed your wife. Morally, he did kill her. Jim, you must. I'm going to make him suffer, too. You can't let someone else be blamed for something you've done. Oh, don't worry. I can break the case against him when the time comes. When the time comes? Yes. And I think he's had enough. Oh, Jim, don't take revenge like this. Please don't. You're destroying yourself. That doesn't matter anymore. Doesn't it, Jim? Some sunshine in their shoes. Come on, it's time we went back. Where? To the Primrose Bar. Why must you go back there again? Because I want to see what the day's done to Charlie Durham. Is that how we must finish it? Yes, Anne. I don't want to come. We can say goodbye here. Very well. Come with me, Anne. If there's been anything between us today, come with me. Hello, Inspector. Sit down. Have one on the house. Thanks. Presently. Not on the ball path, I hope. Never of it. You don't want to see me, do you? I'm hoping to see quite a number of people here tonight. You're one of them. Can we have a talk? Why not? Come up to the office. It's quieter. Oh, yes, as well. If you can spare the time. Don't worry. This place runs itself. Send up a bottle of special. Okay, sir. <laughs> I see. <laughs> oh, that awful moonshine. Oh. I know because the clock was striking. Get to go. Leaving, Mr. Painter? Huh? Charlie needs me. Don't you dare to say a word. After tonight, Charlie and I will be square. I've been praying for this day. Praying. Give him another round. Everybody. Take a seat, Inspector. Paint out? He's been out all the evening. So I hear. I'm having some special scuff sent up. I'd like you to try it. Meantime, have a cigarette. Thanks. Who are the people do you expect to see here tonight, Inspector? Painter. What's he been doing? 
Trying to shoot someone. <sighs> Nonsense. Might have been an accident. Had he been drinking? I believe so. Well, uh, that explains everything, doesn't it? You uh, know all about him, of course. Yes, I know about him. Well, I hope your boys run him in before he does any damage. Come in. All right, sir. Thanks. Tell me what you think of that. Like milk. Who else are you expecting to see tonight, Inspector? A chap called Jim Medway. Do you know him? Yes, I do. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, he was here this morning. Do you know his wife? I knew her before they were married. Let me see. Uh, what was her name? Lorna? That's right. Why did you ask? She died last night. Here in Seagate? In the White Cottage, to be exact. Well, according to the papers, there was a woman named Watson. It was Lorna Medway. You own the White Cottage, don't you? Well, the uh, painter does. Have you anything in writing about it? Receipts or anything? Right here, under my hand. Didn't make any of the payments herself, did she? No. Was there anything wrong with that? I just wanted a specimen of her handwriting. I see. And does uh, Medway know about his wife's death? I think he does. How did he strike you when you saw him today? He seemed uh, a little on edge, but uh, of course I haven't seen him for some time. Did he ask after his wife? No. No, I don't think he did. Did he mention her at all? No. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was being rather selfish. I spent most of the time showing them photographs of my two boys. Strange, isn't it, that he didn't mention his wife? Yes, I suppose it is. We kept a tag on him during most of the day. He did one or two strange things. Was he alone when you saw him? He was meeting a girl. He said something about her. Uh, oh, yes, he said, uh, I wish I'd met her before I'd met Lorna. Then he did mention his wife. Yes. I've forgotten that. Come to think of it, it was a pretty strange thing for him to say if he knew about her death. Do you think the shock affected him in some way? Yes? Mr. Medway and a young lady, sir. All right. Show them both up. All right, sir. Medway and the girl have just arrived. Oh, good. Have another drink, Inspector. Thanks. Excellent whiskey. Yes. It makes you appear as though you uh, weren't on duty. <laughs> I always drink when I'm on duty. I suppose you'd like to talk to Medway alone? If you don't mind my talking to him here. No, the place is yours, Inspector. Hello, Charlie. Hello. This is Inspector Tenby. Inspector, Mr. Medway. Good evening. Uh, this is Miss Corday. Good evening. I'd uh, like a few words with you in private, Mr. Medway. Certainly, Inspector. But I should like Miss Corday to hear your few words. I should like Charlie to hear them, too. I suggest they stay. As you wish. Well, uh, take a seat, Jim. Thank you. And perhaps uh, Miss Corday would sit over there. Drink, anybody? No, thank you. Do you mind answering one or two questions, Mr. Medway? Suppose I give you the answer to that question by question. Very well. When did you come down here? Last night. By what train? The mail. Why? The railway company made no objection. Mail gets in about 3.30. Mm-hmm. Why did you come to Seagate? I came to see my wife. Where was your wife? I had reason to believe she was staying at a place called the White Cottage. What reason? I'd found a letter. If you left the train at 3.30, you'd get to the White Cottage about 4 o'clock. Correct. After you reached the cottage, what did you do? I walked back to Seagate. Without going into the cottage? Yes. Why? Because I saw a man leaving the cottage. Did you recognize him? No. Thanks. I'm sorry to have to ask you this, Mr. Medway, 
But seeing a man coming away from your wife's house at that time in the morning, you naturally put a certain construction on the situation. Naturally. And then you went back the way you'd come? Yes. Why? Why? I suppose I wanted to think. I didn't imagine there'd be much of a welcome waiting for me. I think you're lying, Mr. Medway. I can't help what you think. In fact, I'm prepared to put it more strongly. I know you're lying. I'm looking for... for Inspector Tenby. No. What are you doing to me now? Forgive me, Charlie, that I... that I cause you so much trouble, but... I've come here, Inspector, because... because I want to make a statement. Well, what is it? Inspector, I... I confess I killed Lorna Midway. Back to your old tricks. You've been drinking. I know I'm drunk, Charlie. But I've never been so sober. Your life wasn't worth saving. Easy, Mr. Durham. I know him. Now then, Painter. What is this story of yours about Mrs. Lorna Medway? Well, I, I went over to see her last night to the White Cottage. What time did you leave? I left it exactly four o'clock. I, I remember because the clock was striking when I opened the door. All right, Mr. Dunham. Tell me, Painter, what did you do with the knife? What knife? Oh, I, I threw it into the sea. You threw it into the sea? Yes. You know why? Because I didn't want to make it too easy for you, Cuppers. I don't like Cuppers. I see. Now, look here, Painter. I don't know what you hope to gain by this absurd confession of yours. What I told you is true. You understand? I did go to the White Cottage last night and... Uh... Yes, you may have been at the White Cottage last night, but you did not stab Lorna Medway. She wasn't stabbed. She committed suicide. Isn't that the case, Mr. Medway? Suicide. Why are you asking me? Because you were lying when you said you didn't go into the cottage. You did. Sometime during the night, and you found your wife dead. She'd taken a very large overdose of sleeping tablets. We found half of a suicide note that had blown under the desk. Can I have the other half? Yes, this makes it clear enough. You know you should have brought this to us at once, don't you? Yes. You were making trouble for yourself. Lorna Medway's death has been no mystery to us. We shattered you today, Mr. Medway, for another reason. But now it seems my question should be to Painter. When you left the White Cottage, which way did you come back? I asked you, Painter, which way did you come back? So come back uh, by the cliff path. Are you sure? Yes. Do you meet anybody? No. You must have met someone, Painter. If you left the White Cottage at four o'clock, you'd get to the cliff top at five past. Carson was killed at six minutes past. Carson wasn't killed. He fell over the cliff. He was thrown over, pushed, if you like, and the murderer held on to his tie. But the paper said... Never mind what the paper said. Painter admits to having been there. I'm going to take you into custody, Painter. Hmm. But you, you... On you... suspicion of having murdered Arthur Carson by throwing him over the cliff. What does he want, Charles? Carson was getting money from somewhere. And as you were the man painter who was visiting Lord of Medway, I suggest he was blackmailing you. Possibly sending you letters. I didn't get any letters. Why don't you leave him alone? Can't you see the state he's in? Look, Inspector, may... May I ask you a question? You can ask your questions later. No, no. No! Right now! I want to ask my questions now, and, and I want to have my answers now. You hear? What are you trying to pin on me, huh? What are you trying to do? All I know is that I come here and I, and I tell you that I killed her. I, I told you because I had a reason. Charlie knows. 
No, I, I don't mean it that way. I, I mean, I mean Charlie can explain. Explain it, Charlie. I, I warn you, Inspector. If anybody, if anybody tries to crowd in on me, I, I'm not too easy to deal with. Not too easy. Not, not too easy at all. Hmm. Do you mind phoning the station, Charlie? Go on. Hello. Please. Turn. Durham's got it coming to him without my help. Major! What are you doing? You don't understand. Listen to me. I saved your life once, didn't I? Didn't I? Trust me. You. You better. Forgive me. Please forgive me. Forgive me. No, no. Forgive me. Ah! And the murderer held on to his tie. Pity you didn't go over as well, Charlie. And I've been thinking about you and Jill. Don't give her up. You'll be sorry for the rest of your life if you do. Jim, I just wanted someone to say right that. Right away. Come on, hubby. Come on. And I must see you again. Oh, yes, yes, I want to. But where do you live? I don't know your address. Oh, you'll forget. I'll send it. Why didn't I ask you before? Goodbye. What am I waiting here for? 